this morning. God bless you guys. Welcome to Journey Church. How y'all doing? You seem just a little excited. I don't know. Like, so hey, thank you, Pastor Adam, Journey Church, for helping um, put water wells over in Africa and Zimbabwe. We are excited about um, continuing to do that project. We uh, in the district that they're talking about, there's about 150 schools and only 50 of them have running water, if you could imagine such a thing. So our dream with For the Least of These is to reach those other 100 schools with running water, man. Give them the gift. We're talking about gifts. Activate that gift and give them the gift of something we take for granted, water here in Florida. There's plenty of it where we're at, but they need it there. So if you feel led in any way, shape, or form, uh, or want to learn more about that, I'll give you my cell phone in just a few minutes. But why don't we start out with this? We're in the last day of our Activate series. We're going to be kicking off a new series next week called Jesus Stories. It's going to be a lot of fun. But I thought it might be fun to give away a few gifts in the spirit of the gift series that we've been in. Does, do any of you guys like to get free gifts? A few of you guys? No, serious? Just a few? I've got some shirts to give away. You got to act like you really want it if you want it. Maybe you could stand up. This section's way better than this section. Like, what is wrong with you people? If you want a free gift, you got to get up and act like you want a free There you go. She ran up and got it. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, 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 way back there. Let's see if we can get one back there without hitting somebody and hurting somebody. All right, maybe T-shirts aren't your thing, so maybe I've got some other gifts. I don't know. Who likes gift cards? Oh, now you're getting excited. All right, the first guy who can come up here and do 10 push-ups. I've got a gift card for you. There's a little guy doing it. These are the little guys. All right, show me. Well, you better start doing push-ups. He's going to beat you. Two, jump, three, do push-ups, catch up. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There you go. Since he worked it off already, I'll give him a Krispy Kreme gift card. There you go, buddy. You got a Krispy Kreme gift card for you right there. All right, I need like a husband who wants to do some family games with their kids. First husband to make it up here. Only one husband? I mean, like, come on, what's wrong with the rest of you? Oh, Jerry, he beats you, son. I've got one more. This is the granddaddy of them all. Carabas, Outback, Bonefish Grill, Fleming Steakhouse. Oh, my goodness. Told you I'd give you my phone number. How many of y'all got cell phones in here? If you got a cell phone, you got to raise up your cell You left your cell phone over there. You can't win this without a cell phone, Jerry. If you got a cell phone, raise it up real high. Anybody got cell phones in here? Just a few of you. You got cell phones? All right, get ready, get ready. 904-483-6881. The first person that calls, 904-483. All right, let's see who we got right here. Hello, who am I talking to? Who? (laughs) Come on, mate, Rachel. Come on, Rachel's got the fastest fingers in the house. There you go, Miss Rachel. We'll come back to this radio thing in just a moment. In just a moment. So the rest of y'all, you got my cell phone number in case you want to donate to for the least of these, right? 904-483-6881. Give the gift of water just a little bit later. You could text me that. So, hey, we don't normally do this at Journey Church. We don't just give away all kinds of free stuff, do crazy things like that. But for me this morning, it was a bit of a social experiment, right? I wanted to see how excited you would get. And uh, we do get excited over those things, and there's nothing wrong with it. We all like receiving free stuff, amen? Amen. But we're in this series about spiritual gifts. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, one of the things that God tells us is, Would you earnestly desire these spiritual gifts? So he puts something innately inside of us to desire these things. But I think the devil's done a darn good job of deceiving us into going after the earthly gifts with a vigor in which we do not go after the earnestly desire version of what God really has for us. 
He tries to convince us that those things are not needed in our generation. And that's what this series has been all about, reminding us of the need to activate these gifts that God so liberally wants to give out to us. So just as you were super excited a little while ago to receive some free gifts, at the end of this service, I'm going to do an invitation where I want to pray over people and ask God to impart these gifts, and I hope you show an equal amount of fervor in going after these spiritual gifts that we've been talking about in this series. Let's read one last time the kinds of things that we've been talking about, because I believe that these gifts are needed to combat the forces of wickedness that are set against us in our generation. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting in verse 24, he says, Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. There are a variety of activities, but it's the same God who empowers all of them. And who? He's got a gift for you. It doesn't mean you're going to get every one of these gifts, but let me tell you, he's got some of these spiritual gifts that he wants to activate in you and through you. It says, to each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for what? The common good, for the good of the body, for the good of those who don't know him, to draw him unto him. For one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another by faith the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, and to another prophecy, and to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, which is what we're going to talk about today, to another various kinds of tongues, which Adam talked about last week, and to the interpretation of tongues. And these are all empowered by one and the same spirit who apportions each one individually as he wills. So if you get into some things, like there's some denominations that would say, if you don't speak in tongues, you're not saved. Here at Journey, we wouldn't go that far because it says that he gives to each one as he does. If you read on in the scripture, it even says where Paul says, I wish all would speak in tongues. But we don't all speak in tongues, but some speak in tongues because praise God, he gives you that gift, right? Just as others have knowledge and wisdom that comes in a supernatural sense from God. But I assure you, there's some of these gifts that he wants to impart to you. And maybe that one for you today is the distinguishing of spirits. I pray that God would impart that on us, and I want to hopefully draw some analogies that will help bring that home. Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you that you are the giver of all real gifts. And if the spirit of, the, of this world has deceived us into having more energy and vigor about free gifts, be it a Krispy Kreme card or a Jaguars game or you name it, Lord, Father, we repent from that, and we say, Lord, you are the one who has the gifts that we really want, the ones that are eternal, the ones that are life-changing, the ones that are transformative. And Lord, give us that kind of vigor, that kind of heart that would long for these things and go after them and earnestly desire them. Lord, today in the spirit of what we're talking about, the distinguishing of spirits, as I often pray, Lord, would you give us eyes to see? Would you give us ears to hear? Would you give us the power to put your word into practice in our everyday lives? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I often pray that prayer when I start. Lord, give us eyes to see. Today I'm asking for a renewed sense of, Lord, let us have eyes to see in the Spirit. What are you showing us? Lord, give us ears to hear that it would not just stick in our ears, but it would get deep down within our souls. And as we partake in your word, would it transform us to the core that we would be a changed people, that we would live for him and him alone. We live in a day and age that is filled with noise. At times, it's difficult to discern truth from lies. Would you agree? It seems like everything around us is a lie. Man, just all the stuff that they told us, if you watch the news, all the stuff they told us two years ago is all lies now coming out that it's lies. And the stuff that they're telling us today, two years from now, will be lies too. Because the father of all lies is in control of the world that we live in today. And it's a day and age where believers need to stand up and be able to discern and distinguish the spirit because it says in the end days, even the very elect will be deceived. We need to be able to tune in and filter out from the noise to be able to discern what God is saying in our generation. So what is the gift of distinguishing between spirits? It is a supernatural gift of the Holy Spirit. I would say it has to do with a number of things, but it helps us to discern who we are hearing from. Is it the Holy Spirit? 
Is it our own spirit being the flesh? If we're talking to someone else, is it their spirit and their flesh? Is it a demonic spirit that might be trying to influence the situation? Is it an angelic spirit on the good side that's trying to influence the situation? We need to be able to understand those things. And some of you might even be thinking, Eric, what are you talking about all these spirit stuff? What is all these different demonic things and angelic things? I've, I've never seen one. Well, guess what? That's part of what the spirit of the distinguishing of spirits is all about. This gift gives us the ability to see sometimes in the spirit things that are not happening. I, I have an analogy that I want to give to you that hopefully brings it home. I am a super nerd. A super nerd, if you have a real, I mean like the nerd of epic proportions kind of nerd. I mean, when it comes to like computers, I am a nerd. When it comes to radio waves, I am a nerd. If you think of nerd, you think of ham radio operator. Do you not? Come on, Jesus. I mean like, (laughs) is that not epic nerd status? Guess what? I am an extra class ham radio operator, which is the highest level of ham radio operator that you could possibly get. That means I am an epic nerd. Do we all agree on that today? Amen, right? For some reason, radio waves fascinated me. I'm like, think about it. Like data can be transmitted by these things. Your voice can be transmitted by these things. How crazy is that? There's this entire world that's bouncing around us right now that we could not see. There's this guy around 1880 named Heinrich Hertz. So when you hear the term like megahertz, It comes from his name because he's the founder or the person who found radio waves for the very first time. I did the phone thing a little bit earlier intentionally. Think about it for a second. All of you in this room pretty much have cell phones, right? We take it for granted that they just work in our day and age. But do you think about the power of them? In the early days, it was just voice, but now it's data and internet. The whole world is literally at your fingertips. In this very room, there's hundreds of phones, right? Hundreds of phones. But somehow, when Rachel called me, out of this noise level that I'll talk about in a moment, that cell phone took her voice, encapsulated into digital packets, went over a protocol. There's a protocol in the kingdom. There's a protocol when it comes to radio waves. It goes and it encapsulates it in the radio wave the correct way. It also uses this thing called TCPIP. I'm getting really nerdy here. But it encapsulates it into this protocol so that the data knows how to do it. So it takes her voice, it transmits it into data, it figures out how to send it over the radio waves, it goes to a tower, it goes and gets processed. Who's your carrier? Is it, what, what, what cell phone carrier do you use? She uses Verizon, I happen to use Verizon. Maybe that's why she beat y'all, right? <laughs> but it doesn't really matter which carrier it goes. It kind of instantly goes from there, gets processed by the carrier back, figures out where my phone is, and then actually comes back, talks, encapsulates mine, and we have a real-world conversation. Think of the miracle level of that for a second. How crazy is that, that radio waves could go? In the radio world, there's called something, the noise floor. And in radio world, anything below the noise floor is static. you got to draw the signal out from the noise to be able to interpret it, right? When you think of distinguishing of spirits, it's the same way. There's this world that is beyond our imagination, that is all around us, just like all the cell phones. There's demonic powers and principalities that are in this very room at this very moment. There's angelic principalities that are in this very room at this very moment. We can't see them with our very eyes, just like we can't see those cell phone signals with our very eyes. But think about all the communication that's going on all around us. You're receiving text messages and stuff right here while we're sitting there. All this information is flowing. We don't see it with our natural eyes. Is it such a stretch to believe that there's a spiritual world that operates on similar principles? You can't see them with your eyes, but the Bible tells us that it is nonetheless true. We have to have a receiver, and we have to operate under certain protocols in order to understand how to pull the signal out from the noise that's going on around us. We have to tune in. Remember in the old days, how many are old enough to have radios that you had to tune with your hands, right? You had to tune those things. What you're doing is going by the noise floor and you're finding that signal and you're tuning into where it's at. Are y'all relating to what I'm saying today? See, now you're all officially nerds. You could go take your ham radio test. You could go join us on the airwaves. But what I really hope is that some of you will figure out 
the spiritual sense of what I'm talking about. The spiritual world, it is the exact same way. This gift of distinguishing of spirits gives us the ability to discern what's happening in the spiritual world. There's an alternate world where a war, a war is taking place right now in the heavenly realms all around us that has implications for us here on earth. In the same way that you could go, you know, I recently got um, Comcast. I live in the country, so this was a big deal, man. I mean, I got Comcast cable out there at my house, fiber optic internet, stuff y'all take for granted. I mean, it's like, hallelujah, Jesus, how crazy is this? But think about it. You can watch 4K video. How to think of the miracle of the stuff that we're talking about on every TV without any wires in your house now. Like, how crazy is that? That's what I'm talking to you about today. God wants you to be able to see the spiritual world in 4K. He wants you to be able to discern what is going on in spiritual places. And once you do, you're going to realize that there's a war that has real world ramifications. Just as you could turn your TV on and see some movie in 4K. If you could see what's going on around you right now, you would see the war that's happening in the heavenly places. Paul gives us a glimpse of it in Ephesians 6.10. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, the things that we could see with our own eyes, but we wrestle against the rulers, against the authorities, against cosmic powers, over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Do you believe the word or do you not believe the word, right? He's telling us right here that there's a war going on and that there are real world casualties in the natural all around us, people that are being taken out, the people that we love all around us. Even in this room, the families that we love, the marriages that the devil's trying to disrupt, the jobs that he's trying to take away, the things that he's trying to do to keep you, you know, passive and comfortable so that you don't see that you're really in a war, so that you don't activate the spiritual gifts so that you could go to war against the devil. Because that's what we really need in our generation. He wants to keep us passive and he wants to keep us on the sidelines. So first and foremost, the church must be a hospital for the hurting, right? But then once people are healed up, then we need to get them to go out into the war. The reason they're hurting is because they're casualties of the war that's going on and they're coming in. We need to patch them up, train them up, fire them up, and get them to go back out there and make a difference in the world. That's what God's called you here for. He didn't call you to come to church. He's called you to go to war. He's called you to go to war against spiritual forces of darkness in heavenly places. Now that might not be what you signed up for. Maybe you came for the heavenly fire insurance. Hallelujah, Jesus. But man, once you realize what's really going on, you can make a difference. As Adam was saying, we need to go out there. Maybe you're not active, so to speak, on the front lines of the war in some ways as you think about it in a natural war, but there's a whole group of people that go out in real wars and look for those who are hurting and pick them up and drag them back to the hospital where they could get healed up, where they could get the help that they need. So whether God's called you to be the warrior that's warring in the spirit or God's called you to be the hospital worker, we all need to do our part. Hallelujah. Would we get out there and go after it? Man, that wasn't the message I was intending on preaching, but hallelujah, Jesus was there. So take a very natural situation. You're in a fight with your spouse. You're in a fight with a coworker. The devil wants you to get really mad at that person. Wouldn't it be important to begin to distinguish what's really going on? Is it your spirit that's getting agitated? Is it their spirit that's getting agitated? Is it a demonic spirit trying to rustle some feathers up? It's important to understand those things and we could pray that God would give us eyes to see, that he'd give us ears to hear, that he'd give us the power to put it into practice, right? Rather than getting all caught up in our feelings, <laughs> wouldn't it be important to flow in the spirit? Yes. Think about the broader implications of this. On headlines over the past few years, has the enemy not attempted to go out there and get us all riled up with racial strife? Has he not? With identity issues? With one nation hating another nation? Oh, should we go to war against Ukraine? Should we not go to war against Ukraine? 
Should we go to war against COVID? Should we not go to war against COVID? The news media, influenced by the devil, and all these powers and principalities, is it hard to think that maybe there's powers and principalities pulling the strings of all these people behind the scenes, getting this world of lies that we see manifest before us? That wants us to all hate each other? Guess what? Like they, t- they tell us we're supposed to hate the Chinese people. They tell us we're supposed to hate the Russians. They tell us we're supposed to be on the side of the Ukrainians. What if all that stuff ain't true? Do we just accept what they're saying on the news channels? Or do we go to God by the power of the Holy Spirit? Lord, help us to really see what's going on here. Because what, guess what? The devil is a liar. The devil's a liar. And all you're like, oh my God, I got to go turn off Fox News. What the heck is going on here? <laughs> but we got to be careful because if we lack spiritual discernment, it can get us into trouble, right? Let's go back to the coworker situation for just a second. You guys have gotten along great for years. You're best friends. In any other circumstance and situation, say you're both up for the same promotion. Why are y'all saying boo? As a believer, that should be reason to rejoice for both y'all. If you've been friends for 10 years and they end up getting it and you didn't, under any other circumstance, if you both weren't up for the same job, you'd be rejoicing with one another, would you not? So isn't that the perfect opportunity for the devil to maybe come in the middle of that? That snake that he is and try to get you to divide from one another. So immediately you hear you're both up for the same job. All of a sudden you start hating your best friend. Why is that? Is it your spirit? If it is, guess what? You might need to repent. Lord, why why am I behaving that way? Why am I jealous? Why am I, um, you know, after this position at the expense of my friend? Or maybe it's them that's initiating the hate, right? It could be their flesh, right? The same way. Maybe they're acting in their flesh. It's important to be able to discern that. Or maybe, just maybe, there's a demonic spirit pulling the the strings behind the scenes, trying to get both of you to hate each other, trying to get you as the believer in the workplace to ruin your witness so that you go out there and act a fool at work and then nobody wants to talk to you anymore about the things you said you believe because you ain't acting like a believer no more. See how smart the devil is? He'll try to trick you into doing something stupid, right? And how often do we fall for those things? Lord, we need the gift of distinguishing between spirits. We need the gift of wisdom. Lord, help us with these things. Give us a conscious self-awareness of who we are and who you are and what is going on. Let's talk about the human spirit of the flesh for just a second. It is that part of our, our bodies, our soul, that is the conscious place. It is the self-aware place. It helps make us who we are as individuals, but guess what? The human spirit or our souls can be greatly influenced by outside forces and situations. They make jokes about it on TV, right? You get commercials where they talk about how you get so hangry, right? And you need a Snickers bar or something because you turn into a different person just because you're hungry. You get angry. Have any of you ever done that? Be honest, I want to see some hands raised up. I want to see a few hands raised up. So we let our feelings and our belly control our spirits and get us to do some crazy things, right? Lord, help us in these things. It actually says in Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own what? In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight we got to stop acting just in our feelings, right? What if that demonic spirit was attempting to get you to lose your witness? Lord, help us to discern the difference. What about when we take it to another level and we start to talk about spiritual things and spiritual conversations, when we hear stuff that sounds pretty much true, but maybe isn't all the way true because the devil is a master at understanding the word and manipulating it just slightly to get us off base, or we start to believe some really weird stuff, God gives us a remedy. 1 John 4, 1. Beloved, do not believe in every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have come and gone out into the world. 
By this you will know that the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, and every spirit that does not confess that Jesus is from God, this is the spirit of Antichrist by which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. Little children, you are far from God and have overcome them, for he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. We ask for God's help in the midst of it. There's this whole weird New Age stuff that goes around out there that says that Jesus is not the only way. That there's many ways to get to heaven. The people who espouse to those things talk a lot about peace. They talk a lot about love. They talk a lot about kindness. They talk a lot about acceptance. Accept everybody, right? You got to accept everybody. You got to love everybody. It sounds really good on the surface, does it not? But guess what? Some of it is a lie from the devil because they're twisting it. Because if you go in and you tell that same group of they, them people, right? Come on, some of y'all are going to get mad at me now. You go talk to some of them and that you say, guess what? But the Bible says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except through me. You want to see somebody get ballistic really fast? You want to see somebody get crazy really fast? They get woke real quick. Come on, Jesus. We've all seen it happen, right? There's love, acceptance, and tolerance until you mention the name of Jesus. Why is that? Because it is true. It's true. And then they try to distort it and make us look like the evil ones. Okay, you say there's only one way because that way is Jesus. That means you don't love people. You hate people. You hate people of the opposite color. You hate people that are struggling with their gender identity. You hate people that don't believe the same way that you do. That couldn't be farthest from the truth. That's the devil trying to twist stuff. We love everybody. (laughs) We accept them as they are, just as God does, but he loves them enough not to keep them there if they find themselves in sin, just like he did for us, right? You can't say, oh, Eric, yeah, you're an addicted uh, person. You're you're doing all these crazy things that are not of the world. God accepted me at that moment, and he saved me, and he started to deliver me, and it was a process, and I understand that there is a process. Some healing comes in a miracle. Some healing comes through a process, but guess what? What? God works out those things and we're transformed from glory to glory over the period of time, right? We accept and love everybody, so don't let somebody tell us any different. Come on, Jesus. Y'all agreeing with me right now so far for the most part, at least I hope, right? Discern the spirit that I'm talking about. Ask God to give us that discernment, right? Because the devil is a liar. He tries to twist things all the time. We need to understand that some things are not from the Holy Spirit, they're from a demonic spirit. Whenever we experience opposition and we start to get our feathers ruffled, we should always quickly begin to pray for discernment and the ability to distinguish between spirits. We need to understand who the real enemy is. Your enemy, fellas, is not your wife. Your enemy is the devil and the demonic spirit that might be trying to work behind the scenes to manipulate that situation. And then the wife who's here right now might be getting mad at me. You saying I have a demon? No, I'm not saying you have a demon. I'm saying families are, I'm saying that demonic spirits influence families in both directions. I use the wife as an example, but it could just as well be the husband. It could be somebody else, right? So don't get me wrong on that particular one, right? We need to understand, we need to discern what's going on, and we need to ask for God's help in those situations because he'll get us to start to think we're crazy and hating one another. He'll hate the people that we loved and walked down the aisle with and said that we want to be together forever. Guess what? The devil wants to destroy that more than anything else because it's the two coming together as one, as believers under the spirit of God representing the triune God. So why do you think he goes after marriages so much? He wants to destroy them to keep us from imaging him well here on this earth. We need to lean in on the Holy Spirit. He's the source of spiritual power and wisdom. He's the one who gives us the ability to discern truth from lies and good from evil. John 16, 13 says, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. So when you get saved, you receive a measure of the Holy Spirit. But guess what? In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he tells you that there is more, right? 
So here's how I look at it to go back to my nerdy ham radio thing for a minute, right? I had to get licensed in order to be able to broadcast on the radio. I had to get licensed in order to get that. So I had to earn that, but in this case, you don't necessarily have to earn it. God gifts it to you. But what's happening here is he gives some a license to speak in tongues. He gives others a license to d- discern different spirits, to uh, understand and interpret the speaking of tongues. He gives others words of knowledge, right? He's licensing you. He's giving you this gift. He's giving you this supernatural ability to act on those things. To some, he gives multiple gifts. To others, he gives one. One's not better than the other, but guess what? If he gives it to you, would you please use it? Why? Because it says it's for the common good. It's not meant to be put in a closet. You're not meant to hide it away. You're meant to use it in decency and in order, right? Continue to read on 1 Corinthians 2, 14 and others where they start to get into that next section about decency and order, right? You're meant to use it, but you're also meant to have it. Don't let the devil trick you into believing that these things are not for today or not for you. That's the biggest lie of all times. What the perfect lie to disarm the people of God so that we have no weapons to spiritually go to war against them. So if Paul's right in Ephesians chapter 4, guess what? We need the distinguishing of spirits. There's one last one that's pretty crazy, that's in line with the same thing. Sometimes God will actually give you the ability to see in the spirit visually as well. Like you'll literally be able to see angels and demons. You'll literally be able to see what's going on. Lest you think there's not precedence for this in the Bible. Think of Jacob's ladder for a moment. I think we preached on it in one of Adam's messages not long ago. He gave him the ability to see the spirits going, ascending and descending from heaven. Think about John in the book of Revelation where he opened up the heavens so that John could see what was going on in the very throne room of God, right? Think about one of my favorites in 2 Kings 6.15, Elisha. It says, when the servant of the man of God rose early in the morning and went out, they were under attack, by the way. Behold, an army with horses and chariots was all around the city. And the servant said, alas, my master, what shall we do? He says, do not be afraid. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Now, that servant couldn't see that at that moment. He's like, Elisha, be crazy, people. He's crazy. Then Elisha prayed and said, oh, Lord, please open his eyes. Give us eyes to see. Give us ears to hear. Give us the power to put your word into practice. So the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. If you're going through it today, remember there is more of us than there is of them, that God is in control, that he loves you, that he's on your side, that he's going to fight on your behalf. I've even been told, though I haven't seen them with my own eyes, but I could confirm it by numerous witnesses over the years that oftentimes when preaching from this pulpit, there's been two angels, one on both of my sides. I'm like, that is a reassurance to me. Maybe one of them's my guardian angel. The other one's like an angel over journey or something. But it's happened too many times from disparate people over the years for me to deny it because people have just independently walked up to Mary Jo or I and said, during the service, there was an angel there, there was an angel there. Man, it's crazy over the years that we've seen that same thing. So I guarantee you that they're there right now. And I pray that he gives some of us eyes to see them because I've heard that they're here all the time when we preach. So here's what I'd say. Would you rise with me as we close out this service today? If you're earnestly desiring any of the gifts that we've talked about during the course of this series, I would love to pray for you. Our prayer team would love to pray for you. Here's what I would ask that maybe just as some of you got really fired up and excited and ran up here for a Krispy Kreme gift card or got excited and jumped up to get a t-shirt, See, when it says earnestly desire, that means like, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to step out in faith. Lord, I'm going to believe you and ask you for these things because I need wisdom. I need an heightened ability and a supernatural sense to be able to to serve or to discern. Or Lord, I've been longing for the gift of speaking in tongues. Would you please impart that on me today? If you've been longing for or earnestly desire any of those gifts, I encourage you right now, 
don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Would you join me right here at the front? I'd love to pray for you. If that's you, come on up. I see people starting to make their way out. The rest of you just don't like free gifts, I guess. Come on, Jesus. Now, if that's you, come on up. Come on. Yeah, give them a big round of applause. God wants to move. I have no doubt. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Hey. And as Adam intimated earlier, I'd be remiss if I didn't say it, the biggest gift of all time is the gift of one surrendering their life to Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And just as I did one faded Sunday morning on May 31st of 1992 when I walked into Hollywood Hills High School, God gave me eyes to see and ears to hear that this spiritual world, this Jesus that I had heard about from time to time was real as real could get. And on that very day, I walked up to the front, just like many people have walked up to the front today, and I said, Lord, I surrender my life to you. And maybe God's impacting your heart in that same way today. As we begin to pray, I would encourage you to make your way right up here to the front. We'd love to join hands with you as well and pray with you as you receive the greatest gift of all time. Would you give God a little bit of a round of applause in this place today? God is the king of the universe. So, Lord, we come before you this morning not to close the service, but more as an enlistment this morning, Lord Jesus. We just affirm and reaffirm our commitment to you as we get to walk out of this training ground.